Yo, what's good? This is your boy Derek Branch here of Memphis Wire on Strike Seven Sports. In today's video, we're we'll gonna go ahead and recap the Memphis Tigers final game of the 2023-2024 regular season, which was a rematch against the Florida Atlantic Owls, a team that they just beat two weeks ago on their home turf at FedEx Forum. Now the rivalry in the matchup shift to um, Boca Raton at Eleanor O. Eleanor R. Baldwin Arena. Pretty much was a sold out crowd um, for the matchup. You had a lot of celebrities there. I believe Antonio Brown was there. Chris Carter was there. Uh, I think Lisa Leslie was there. A lot of big names on, on um, down in that area to watch this game, but that's uh, Boca Raton. A lot of people are, you know, Frequent to that area, migrate to that area a lot of in, in certain situations. But anyways, man, the Tigers lose this game by a score of ninety-two to eighty-four, which uh, pretty much dampers their AAC prospects in regards to the tournament. They now have to go to win four straight games in four days to repeat as conference champions. You know, four straight games for in four straight days to even get to the conference finals. So he was getting the Tigers loss, huge opportunity that um, they didn't capitalize on them in front of them. And it is what it is at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at the statistics real quick and the starters and all that. So, I mean, it's still, it's still the same, you know, flow, same setup as the previous games that we had watched with Memphis. You know, the starters played a lot of minutes. Um, Tom and Nick Quan Tom played 36 minutes. David Jones, 35. Nicholas Jordan, 23. Jaquan uh, Walton, 34. Javon Quinn, 35. Points today, um, points today, Nick Quan Tom led the team at 27 points. One block, one steal, one assist, seven rebounds. Played 36 minutes. Five or six from the uh, three-point line, 11 to 15. Field goal, David Jones, uh, 16 points, no blocks, one, no steals, one assist, eight rebounds, two or seven, three point line, five or 17 field goals made. Nicholas Jordan, seven points, um, six rebounds, one or two three pointers, three or five from the field. Jaquan Walton, 10 points, one steal, six assists. Four rebounds, two of six three pointers made, four of seven from the four of eight from the field. Corner league, sixteen points, one steal, four assists, one rebound, four of eight three pointers made, five of eleven from the field. From the field. So with that being said, and we actually look at it, Tomlin had a huge game once again. I believe it for the four straight game with. 20 points or more in a, in, a, in a matchup. Huge performance by him. He came to play in this matchup. Now, where the Tigers needed help at today was from, and this ain't me criticizing the team, or criticizing the team or the players. David Jones needed, needed, needed to have a huge game today, along with a guy like in the Kwan Tomlin. Javon Quinterly. Was a little was quiet in the beginning, but got hot in the second half. But at that time, at that point in the game, it was too late. You know, Nicholas Jordan, this is a typical Nicholas Jordan type of game, right? Seven points, grab you some rebounds, six to eight rebounds. Do what he does what he has to do. You know, but David Jones, guys like a David Jones, Quinterly needed to chip in. And I, I I wrote this in the preview like yesterday, but I, that I posted on the um social media pages, the YouTube community tab, is that these three players, Nick Juan Tomlin, Javon Quinterly, and um David Jones, all need to have like a, a repeat type, a repeat performance of what we saw last week when David Jones put up over 30. Quinterly put up 22, um, 20, I believe 25 points. They go on time had 28 points, career high. They need that type of performance to beat this team again. 
That's when they need it. And you didn't get help. You didn't really get any help from like Quindley until late in the second half. You know, in regards to the actual game and the game itself, the floor of the game, it started out real close between Memphis and Florida Atlantic back and forth game. Memphis had to lead at a certain to a certain extent, but what really hurt them is that they couldn't pull away. They couldn't do anything to separate themselves. So the game was close. They, that, that kept the game close for Florida Atlantic. And, you know, in the middle of the first half, that's where the Owls went on that run. That's what I was went on that run, took control of the game. And when Penny Hardaway put in Jordan Brown in that match, in that he subbed out Jarvis, Jordan Brown for um Nicholas Jordan. He subbed in Jordan Brown for Nicholas Jordan. That's when it really when Florida Atlantic really took off. That's to be honest. That's when it really took off. It was 36 35 with under a minute left to go into halftime. But you um, Florida Atlantic hit back to back threes, back to back shots to push the lead to 41 35. So it's 41 35 going to the half. Still a close game. Tigers down by um, six points. And what we saw last week, last week, man, that's a rarity. When they came out at, back at halftime and just Blitz this bulldog, the uh, bulldogs, UAB in that second half. We didn't see that this time. We did not see that, and it's right that that, that 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 type of stuff happens. You know, we have a, such a huge lead like that. But this game, it was close. Memphis was only down by six, and it just never happened. It just never like turned it on to like the, where the game would be really close. And um, the mat in regards to the matchups, to like how Memphis matched up with this team, and I was kind of fearing worried about this going to this to the rematch, and that's how to defend um, Vladimir Goldine. Hope I, I know I'm not pronouncing his name right. His first name is just hard for me to, to pronounce, but just calling him Vladimir um, Golden, that center, seven one center, former Texas Tech Ray Raider transferred from that program. He had another huge game. He had a huge game. He had a good game against Memphis in the, the prior match. I mean, he had a good game this game, this time around. 21 points at 12 rebounds. He grabbed 12 boards, 12 block shots, um, no threes. He was 9 and 12 from the field. Played 29 minutes. The dude is a really efficient player. He is third. I think he's third in the country in field goal percentage. Seven-foot center. He's really good. Um, Janelle Davis has been quietly, you know, he didn't really get going in this game because a lot of people thought, a lot of people felt this though. This was a game that where he could like maybe kind of come out of a slump and go off, but he didn't. We didn't really see that, but he still contributed, you know, 14 points, played 33 minutes, was five or 14 from the field, from the floor, only had one three in this matchup and three rebounds, five assists. 12 still. So it was a fishy game for him. But his teammate Greenlee, Brian Greenlee, he had 21 points. He made five threes in this game. He made five threes. Elijah Morton coming off the bench, he made a three. He had a three. He had um, a three pointer. He, had, he made three threes. So they hit out all together as a team, they hit 11 threes. Memphis had 16 threes, but that doesn't tell the whole story. You know what I'm saying? Because in that second half, Memphis was trying to battle back to make it a game, but the defense, the issues with the defense creeped up again where they just let those guys drive in, do what they want, guys not going to the perimeter, hitting threes. It was just a lot to overcome. And you in Florida Atlantic had an answer every time that Memphis would try to Memphis would try to creep back into the game. 
And I was reading uh, online. I read, uh, I read uh, Jason Bunn's column, his recap. And he was saying that the arena was so crowded, it was so loud, it was so packed in there that the players had a hard time getting established, getting um, situated, getting into their defense, getting into their offense, getting into their roles because of the crowd. You know, and Penny Hardaway, they were saying that they were having issues communicating with each other, communicating with Penny Hardaway, and that kind of corner of what they said is that that kind of played into the advantage of Florida Atlantic. So that really affected them as well. But it is what it is now, man. And, you know, the Tigers, you know, they put themselves in this situation. You know, I felt as though at the beginning of the season, I felt as though – even though these games were being hyped and being billed as a potential rivalry and huge games, I felt as though it would be a good, a big game, but it wouldn't be as to be to the point to where if Memphis lose, they could be like pretty much out of the NCAA tournament pitcher. I felt as though if, even if they split the series, like I thought they was going to do anyway, before the season started, I felt as though Memphis was still, being the clear to get to the NCAA tournament. But this is what happens when you lose games. You have bad losses like to – when you have bad losses to teams like Rice, lose to North Texas, you lose to Tulane, you lose to UAB. Um, you know, that's what this is what happens. When you lose those games, you, don't, you no longer have the grace – to make them up. And even in the loss to UC USF, the Florida, South Florida, you um you don't have the grace, the grace period comes to an end at a certain time. Because you can only lose so many games to like and continue to deem yourselves eligible for the tournament. Especially in a league like the American when it could be a one or two bid league. You know, and who know who saw who saw Florida who saw South Florida Atlantic Florida, South Florida come in like that. You know they got they got so good that the um they were able to get able to get a um, a top twenty five ranking. And in that same token, they, they lost today. By the way, they lost to Tulsa, but that's neither here nor there because Memphis has to win this has to win as the, the league now the entire league to even be deem eligible for the tournament you know same with south florida so and from what i'm hearing is that fau florida atlantic is pretty much in the clear not to get to, to qualify for the tournament they don't even have to win it from what i heard now that this win helps them a lot you know what i'm saying but memphis put themselves in a situation you know to where this game was like a, a must win to keep anything, to keep things afloat, you know, because those losses, man, that's that's what really hurt the Tigers, man. The losses prior to playing this this matchup really hurt Memphis. You know, the Christ loss, the Tulane loss, um, North Texas loss, the SMU loss, those ugly losses made this game so much bigger than what it should have been. You know, but Tigers got to go through it. They got to go through the gauntlet to get where they want to be. And um, I think they can do it. But the challenge is going to be attrition. You know, getting players, getting tired, you know, not having enough rest, ballast things out. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be up to, you know what I'm saying? So it's still to, to be determined that if Memphis, Memphis is going to be a fifth or sixth seed. If they're a fifth seed, they'll play Wichita State. The Wich they'll play the Wichita State or Tulane winner on um Thursday. If not, if they're a sixth seed, they'll play the winner of Temple versus Rice or UTS UTSA versus Rice. So that's how we see it right now. That's how it's playing out right now. So we'll see how everything plays out going forward. The Tigers come up short today, nine to eight to four. We'll see how it all shakes out. I think the Tigers can get to the to the conference finals. 
It's just a matter of attrition kicking in and then being a better hotter team or not. So that's what it's going to be up to. So we'll see. All right, so I'll have y'all for right now, man. Give me a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know how you feel. What are your thoughts on today's matchup? Do you think the Tigers can go four games, can win four games in four days and get back into the NCAA tournament conversation? Also, check out StrikeSevenSports.com for latest content of Memphis Tigers football and basketball program. Have a blessed day. Peace. I'm out.